Hi, in this jet engine tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily add a load more button to your listing grid. As you can see in this example right here, we have six items in the listing grid. And right down here, I'm going to show you how you can add this load more button. So when the user clicks that, it's going to load up another six. And if they click it again, of course, it's going to load up another six. So what you can do is you can attach this load more button to a regular button widget inside Elementor. And as an added bonus, I'm also going to show you how you can use a lot of animation instead of a button and how you can also attach it to an image or in this case, I'll be using an SVG. So let's just jump right into the back end. Here we are on the back end of the website. And the very first thing we need to do is uh, go underneath jet engine and listings. So what we need to do here is create our very first listing. And if you aren't familiar with what a listing is, it's basically in this case, the how the card's going to look on the front end so a listing in this case is this dynamic image the dynamic title and the price right here so this is one listing and then it just duplicates it a whole bunch of times every time a product comes up it pulls in this listing layout so that's kind of what a listing is at a high level now let's go in and show you how easy it is to create something like this what you need to do is just go up here listing items click add new and in this case you can just keep this at post and post type, um, this is a WooCommerce website, so we're just gonna be using products, but you can use it for post grids or anything along those lines. This example is just a WooCommerce, but if you don't have WooCommerce and you wanna do this with a blog post, you can just click post. But in this case, let's do products, and I'm just gonna call this products grid, something like that. And in this case, I'm just gonna keep it at Elementor, click create listing item, now we can go ahead and design how it's gonna look. What I like to do is collapse all of these panels up here and just expand this one called listing elements. These are the widgets that we're gonna be using to create a listing. So in this case, the very first thing we need to do is pull in dynamic image. So let's just pull that in and it's gonna automatically pull in the post thumbnail. So whatever thumbnail we're gonna be using for that image, it should show up right here. And if you go underneath alignment, we just wanna center that. So if you wanna make it look like this, this is always just going to be centered. I'm going to center the title and the price as well. So once you do that, you can go back into your feed right here and let's do a dynamic field. This is going to be the title and you can see right here, it pulls in the title. So let's go into here and same thing under style. Let's go ahead, align that below it, change it to like an H3 tag or something along those lines. That should be fine right there. And then the next thing is we can do dynamic field again for the price. And for this one, we're gonna go underneath object field. You can keep this first one selected. And I'm gonna show you all of these options. This is what I really like about Crocodile Block and their products is they give you a whole bunch of options so you don't have to custom code anything. So what we're looking for is this one right here called the price HTML string. So what that's gonna do is bring in the price of the product with the dollar sign and all the decimals and commas. So it's a really uh, clean way to do that. So if we go ahead and just change that to like an H4, it should make it a little bit smaller. And same thing, let's just align that to the center. So what we need to do is create a link to that post. So when a user clicks the image, it will go into this product. And to do that, you just click on the image or whatever widget you want. In this case, I'm just gonna select the image and underneath linked image, just click that on. And in this case, under link source, you could just keep this at the permalink. So what that's gonna do is automatically redirect that user to that permalink. So let's just hit update. And that's all you have to do to create your listing. Next, we're gonna jump into the front end of this page right here and show you how you could do a listing grid and then you can add that load more button. Here we are on the back end of that page. Now let's just type in listing and you can see right here, just pull in this widget right here called listing grid. Just pull that in. Now we need to pull up the uh, listing that we just created. So in this case, I think it was called products grid. So once you start typing, it should pop up right here. So as you can see, I'm gonna pop that up and you can see this is our listing grid. And what I always like to do is just hit update, make sure that the grid's working correctly before you start to add your button. Here we are on the front end of that page. Let's just go ahead and make sure everything is working. So if I click that permalink, you're gonna see it goes straight into that product. And same thing here. If you hover over this one, it should go to this product. You can see it's just gonna take a second to load and there goes that one. 
So the listing is working correctly. Now we can go ahead and add that button and everything should be working fine. Once you're back into your listing grid widget, you can just click this button right here, load more. Once you click that on, you're gonna see pretty much nothing happens. Um, because what you need to do is pull in a, uh, in this case, we're gonna start with an Elementor button and then you need to assign it to this uh, feed. So what we need to do is right underneath here where it says load more element ID, let's give it an ID. So let's give it load underscore more. What I'd like to do is just copy this. Now what we need to do is just go ahead, just type in button, and let's throw it underneath that widget. Let's center that button, click it where it says load more, and then right underneath here, this is where the magic is happening, underneath button ID, just paste in that ID we just created called load more. And if you wanna change the settings right here before you hit save, uh, right now we have it at three columns and uh, post number uh, six. Let's just go ahead and make that a three so you can see how it really works on the uh, front end. So I hit update on that. Let's see how it looks on the front end. And if I click load more, it should load three more. Here we go, it just keeps loading three more, three more. So yeah, that works out perfect. And if for some reason you don't wanna create it where the user has to click that button or an image to go, they also give you this option right here where it says load more type. Instead of by click, you could do infinite scrolling. So when you click that on, you're gonna see they give you two other options called loading text and loader spinner. So what this is gonna do is, let me hit update and show you how that works. This is gonna make it a little animation so when the user uh, scrolls down the page, you're gonna see right down here, see where it says loading and that little spinner. So that's gonna do it uh, for infinite, you can see right here. So if the user just keeps scrolling, it will just keep loading up. So I'm also gonna show you how you can use a lot of animation or an image to trigger that on click uh, load more. So if we go back into load more type, let's go by click and we can keep this uh, load more element ID. Um, you can also, like I said, copy this if you want. Now let's go ahead and add a little Lottie animation that I have. So if I go right here, upload a Lottie animation, and I already have one saved right here, and you can see that when I bring it in, it's just these three little dots, so it looks like it's loading, and you can just have that loop so the user knows that there's something to click on. And what we need to do is just a few different options right here. The very first thing is if you want it to loop, you can go underneath loop right here. So you can just see it's gonna keep looping that animation. And of course they give you uh, you know other options if you want it faster or anything like that. And then what we need to also do is create a custom URL. Um, we're not gonna link it to anything. So you can just do the pound or the hash symbol right here. That's just gonna load up nothing. So you, it, it makes it where the cursor is gonna change to a pointer. And then the very last thing you need to do is underneath advanced, where it says CSS ID, that's where you're gonna paste in that load more ID that we called from the widget right here. And let's make this Lottie animation a lot smaller, and then let's do some testing. So something like that looks pretty cool. So let's hit update and see if that works as well. And as you can see right here, the Lottie animation is playing, the mouse cursor is changing, and if you click it, it's gonna load up three more right here. Load up three more. So yeah, it works just like as if it was a button. Now let's go ahead and show you how you can do this with a regular image widget with an SVG. And to pull this off, it's very similar to this Lottie animation. So let's go ahead and just pull in a regular image right here. And I have this little SVG of these three dots right here. Um, it doesn't animate or anything like that. It's just three dots as an SVG. So let's bring this a lot smaller. And then same thing, what we need to do under the link, custom URL, just add that pound so it goes nowhere. And when you do that, the size might change. You might need to readjust it. And same thing, just underneath the CSS ID, paste in that custom ID you created, and it should work exactly the same. And if we go here, you're gonna see the user clicks that and it loads up just like the Lottie animation. And that's how you can easily add a load more button to your listing grid using JetEngine. Thank you for watching.